I think we can uh, keep it. Okay. Okay, I think we are going to start. Uh, I would like uh, to welcome uh, all of you, all the members of the COST uh, who traveled uh, and joined us for this meeting that uh, I want to remind uh, is the first uh, meeting in presidency, as uh, Anna said before, after 2019 uh, in uh, IFA. Uh, and also all uh, our uh, friends and colleagues who are uh, following uh, uh, online. Uh, I would like just to, to start by thanking the Fondazione Fentrinelli and in particular Francesca Odisio who uh, supported us in the organization of this uh, opening of our cost meeting. And uh, at the same time, I would like also to welcome you uh, on behalf uh, of uh, the director of our uh, department, the Department of Architecture and Urban Studies at Politecnico di Milano that supported and co-founded the organization of this uh, uh, symposium. Uh, the symposium, the conference that is organized in the framework of the COST meeting is titled Southern Europe and Beyond. Uh, and tomorrow we will introduce uh, uh, in a detailed way uh, the, the aim and the purposes uh, of uh, the symposium. But I want also to welcome uh, all of you on behalf uh, of uh, uh, our uh, Italian team of the COST and the organizers of this symposium, who are uh, Federico Zanfi, Nicole De Toni, Filippo De Pieri, and Laura Daglio. Uh, we worked uh, together to organize uh, this, uh, this uh, event and this uh, symposium. Uh, and at the same time, I would like uh, to thank uh, Costanza, who supported us uh, for in the organization, uh, in all the steps of the organization uh, of this uh, uh, meeting, uh, and uh, the other members of the Italian team, who also tomorrow will present, Alessandra Como and Luisa uh, Smeragliolo Perrotta. So we want to welcome uh, you. Uh, and uh, we decided to open uh, uh, the meeting here um, today with uh, a, a keynote lecture that it's going to be a lecture by one of the cost member, mm, our colleague uh, Constantina Kalfa. Uh, we thought that it was uh, extremely interesting to uh, bring uh, to Milan, to our research group, uh, a voice uh, that uh, is a uh, working on middle class housing in Greece uh, with the methodologies and strategies and approach that are really close to what uh, for certain times we did here uh, um, in, uh, in Italy, in the framework of our Italian groups. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, Constantina briefly. Um, some of you already know her work uh, uh, through the cost uh, network, and uh, I found uh, the documentary she produced with her team in Athens uh, fantastic. So we, we asked her to um, talk about uh, this uh, research project uh, today. Uh, Constantina is uh, uh, an architectural and urban historian uh, who work uh, on post-war modernization uh, with a particular attention on uh, informal uh, housing practice and uh, uh, how how uh, these uh, cross, uh, in some way, diverse types of politics and social uh, conflicts. Uh, she published uh, a lot on housing and, uh, uh, in particular, uh, on the production mechanism and logic uh, of uh, uh, housing. We, I, we can mention just some publication on the Journal of the Society of Architectural Historians, uh, Rethinking Marxism and Architecture and Culture. Uh, with uh, some colleagues, uh, Stravros Ali Fragix and Panayotis Turnikiotis. Uh, she guest edited the section Small Scale Building Enterprise and Global Home Ownership in the Age of Economic Expansion of the journal ABE, Architecture Beyond Europe. 
And I would like to arrive uh, to the topic of uh, Constantina's talk today. Uh, she uh, co-created the documentary Antiparochy, a short introduction, where uh, she, for the first time, presented her oral history uh, research on uh, the Greek system of uh, antiparochy. Uh, she also is also the author of the book, and I conclude, Self-Centering Now, the Invisible Side of American Aid to Greece, published in Greek, uh, that analyzes uh, some figures of global experts and some uh, actors uh, involved uh, in the um, promoting uh, through US uh, funds, let's say, uh, housing aid programs in Greece. So I would leave uh, to uh, Constantine and thank you a lot for accepting uh, the invitation. No, I, must, uh, I must thank you, uh, Gaia and Nicole and Laura and Filippo, Federico and all the organizers uh, for uh, the invitation. It's a great honor to be here. So, uh, grazie tanto. Um, so, I was not prepared for this setting, so I hope I'm, I have to read the text and then change the slides, so I hope I'm not going to mess up. Um, so um, this, uh, the image you see here, is Athens, uh, captured by esteemed uh, Greek photographer uh, Georgis Hieronymus. Um it's a mess, right? Um, and there is a whole series of uh, pictures like this. Uh, Jerolbus created a whole portfolio with such pictures uh, in an effort to critically address the issue of the modern Greek city in borderless expansion. This uh, quote, uh, seemingly endless aggregation of five to seven story apartment buildings, end of quote, as uh, the British ar architectural historian and critic Kenneth Frampton described it, was the express product of uh, the 30-year building boom uh, between the early 1950s and the early 1980s, uh, when the city's population over doubled from uh, 1.4 million to three. Uh, let me uh, just uh, bombard you with uh, images of this uh, kind. Um, so you can see um, it's, a whole se it's a whole series of uh, pictures like this. And um, these, these, I think these are sought uh, by uh, Margarita uh, Yoko Nikitaki, who's another uh, Greek photographer, a uh, young and promising one. And um, I think uh, these are with a more uh, dystopic flair, as you might, might agree. Um, I want to make sure that you get the picture of wh what Athens looks like. So a question a first-time visitor would naturally seek to answer is how was this unsettling environment created, right? Uh, a quick answer to this would be the following. After World War II, the needs for housing were immense, and in the absence of uh, stateless-led housing schemes or large capital investors, a kit pro arrangement called antiparochy thrived instead. This popular invention, antiparochy, uh, functioned as a system of high return for capitalizing on land and at the same time secured uh, the required new housing supply in the market. Proprietors, and more often than not, proprietors not just of a central plot, but of an old plot and functionally obsolete uh, house on that plot, uh, would agree um, with a contractor for the demolition of their old property and the construction site of a middle-rise apartment uh, building, uh, the so-called uh, polykatikia. Uh, please uh, remember these terms, antiparochy, uh, the kit pro quo arrangement, uh, and antiparochia, uh, polykatikia, its product, uh, the middle rise apartment building, as I will use them uh, in what follows. A uh, landowner uh, would get not only a new how, how, can you hear me? Because I feel that, okay. Uh, would get not only a new home, a modern apartment of the constructed polykatikia in place of his, uh, her old uh, house, but also one or two more apartments uh, for his 
uh, or her family members or for sale uh, while uh, the contractor would get the rest of the apartments uh, to sell them. As you can imagine, uh, this dealing where both parts uh, aimed to profit, basically, was a basic reason uh, for the uh, emergence of the country's uh, middle income strata. Uh, interestingly, and this is relevant to the symposium, I think, uh, the success of antiparochy was a, uh, as a presumably uniquely Greek phenomenon uh, has been attributed to the Greeks' idiosyncrasy. Um, recently, architectural historian Ioana Theocharopoulou published the book Builders, Housewives and the Construction of Modern Athens, which focuses on the cultural aspects and identities that uh, produced Athens, incorporating tools from uh, social history, anthropology and gender studies. The book belongs, in my view, uh, to a long theoretical thread uh, dating back to the late 1970s, which seeks to explain why Greek urbanity and housing uh, differs so much from the European ones. And when I say European, I'm referring to no uh, Northern European models, of course, uh, which stood for a long period, in fact, still are, uh, to a certain degree, a sort of, um, a sort of yard uh, stick of uh, Greece's not only urban, but, but also uh, economic development. Uh, from Guy Bourguel's uh, 1976 um, uh, Athens, the development of a Mediterranean capital, uh, to Lila Leodidou's 1990, uh, the Mediterranean city in transition, to the 30th, uh, 30th uh, Venice Biennale uh, Greek catalog made in Athens, uh, there is a persistent focus on the particularities of the Greek society. Uh, even these uh, are often presented as part of uh, the Mediterra Mediterranean or, or even uh, Southern European ones. Uh, in fact, if we were to trace uh, the historical path of contemporary interest about the polykatechia and the Athenian landscape overall, uh, this would take us back to the widespread critiques emerging in the late uh, 1970s against the homogenizing mechanisms of modern architecture and the genius of the architect and in search of regional difference and anonymity in architecture. Uh, it, it is not by chance that Alexander Jonis and Leanne Lefebvre, as well as uh, Kenneth Frampton's uh, formulation of uh, critical regionalism, found its typical qualities in a polykatechia uh, designed by the Greek uh, Athens-based architectural firm, um, firm Atelier 66, uh, headed by Dimitris and Susanna uh, Donakakis. As Frampton revealed in his introduction to Theoharopoulos' book, uh, the, the one I just uh, discussed before, um, he first visited Athens in 1959. That is, uh, some when uh, these photographs uh, were taken uh, in 1957 uh, and uh, the 1960s. Um, and in his own words, he was left, quote, impressed uh, by the extraordinary continuity and uh, sense of urbanity. <laughs> he publicly expressed uh, his enthusiasm much later, a few years after he used the term critical regionalism in his introduction uh, for the Greek translation of, uh, the of his milestone, uh, Modern Architecture, a Critical History. Uh, in 1987, that is, uh, when Athens uh, already looked like this, <clears throat> uh, deprived of public outdoor space and overwhelmed with an uh, increase in vehicular uh, traffic, uh, by then smog and environmental degradation reached unprecedented levels, uh, forcing uh, depollution measures and the public discourse uh, to oppose the way Athens and other Greek cities were urbanized. Frampton, nevertheless, highlighted the polykatechia as, quote, a uniquely modern manifestation of urban growth stemming from the spontaneous evolution of the society rather than from planned intervention, end of quote. Paradoxically, therefore, 
just as in the 1980s, Athenians uh, woke up one day, looked around them and said, our city is ugly, as uh, architectural critic Nikos Vatopoulos put it, and they blamed this uh, to the lack of planning, of course. Uh, architectural criticism and theory uh, started appreciating uh, the different strands and anonymous actors having produced them from below, uh, attractive in their view, architectural modernity. Today, uh, Greek urbanity's international legacy inclines to this aesthetization, I would say, of uh, anonymity and the unplanned. Uh, in other words, of an architecture without architects, echoing uh, Bernard Rudowski's uh, step outside the narrow definitions of architecture. Our three-year research project on antiparochy, titled Antiparochy and its Architects, Histories of... Uh, I don't know why it's orange right now, but it's okay. Uh, you can still read the, the, the letters, I think. Histories of social forces, special politics, and the architectural profession in Greece, conducted at the School of Architecture at the National Technical University of Athens, and founded by the Hellenic Foundation uh, for Research and Innovation, set out to get to know the anonymous architects uh, that saved modern Athens, uh, such as the contractors, the brokers, uh, the small-scale construction companies, the small investors, the notaries, the construction workers, the builders, the steel workers, the carpenters, the plumbers, and so on. We were really interested to listen to their stories in an effort to write the public bottom-up history of what has arguably uh, been, um, in fact, a par excellence bottom-up phenomenon. And as I'm about to discuss, this led us to a whole new way of writing architectural and urban history. At the same time, however, we were also deeply interested uh, to include another sort of Adiparachis architects, uh, which we understood uh, as the broader spatial politics and strategies of an era that lasted from the first post-war uh, years up until the end of the military dictatorship in Greece in 1974, a period uh, where, when Antiparochy uh, thrived, as already mentioned. This also led us to new and unexpectedly expanded fields of inquiry. We found out that much in the story of Antiparochy allows, considering its history, and indeed the political economic trajectory of, of Greek modernization as commensurate with what in largely, uh, largely a third world context would come to be described as development. As you might know, Greece had become a top priority for post-war US foreign politics. Uh, United States opposition to communist influence uh, stimulated the establishment of the Truman Doctrine and the American mission for aid uh, to Greece in 1947 uh, uh, that acted uh, in effect as a shadow government uh, in Greece. Both the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan uh, that succeeded, um, uh, succeeded the Truman Doctrine help uh, by July 1948 uh, um, channeled extensive funding into Greece. And all too soon forgotten part of the US he help to Greece was the Houding Aid. Housing aid, sorry. When on 2017 I started working on numerous sources related to Greek post war reconstruction, including official documents issued not only by the Greek state but also by US agencies, I realized to my surprise that there was a spectacular support uh, for rural housing reconstruction. Um, I, I published these uh, findings uh, in the book uh, I mentioned and in the recent uh, essay at the General of the Society of Architectural Historians. Yet the contribution of the United States was barely acknowledged. The Greek press never discussed it and it remained obscure uh, in the recent literature too. Soon I found out that one reason for this paradox, certainly there were uh, many reasons for this, but uh, one, this one was perhaps a most important one, uh, is that the US housing experts themselves chose to hide uh, their assistance to Greeks. Uh, during their involvement in official decision-making in Greek reconstruction, uh, they questioned the effectiveness of uh, centrally planned architectural projects and suggested instead uh, the stimulation of small-scale, family-based 
private housing construction, uh, both in the countryside and the Greek cities. Now, you would think that this was um, an exceptional um, response to a great crisis uh, requiring urgent action. However, under US guidance, house building was uh, stimulated to become a significant industry in its own right, primarily because of its social consequences, which in turn were expected to contribute to growth. As Greek reconstruction approached completion, uh, US experts publicized the Greek scene uh, in various reports uh, in the context of presenting subsequent international aid schemes in Puerto Rico, uh, Taiwan, uh, Jamaica, Cambodia, Guatemala, Colombia, uh, Nicaragua, Chile, Mali, and Morocco. Uh, note that in the mind of American housing experts, uh, what happened in Greece was closer to what was underway uh, in the decolonized or uh, developing world, or, or what we largely call the global south, right? Um, so it might not be by pure chance uh, that a similar combination of factors, that is rural, rural internal migration, the appearance of informal kid pro arrangements uh, in, in which small investors pool uh, their resources, and the so-called deficit of stateness uh, in housing construction had powerful influence uh, on urbanization in other cities of uh, the global south too. In other words, the growth of uh, small-scale enterprise in the Greek housing sector uh, was hardly uh, just bottom-up or, for that matter, ideologically, uh, ideologically neutral. Um, it is as if these photographs, uh, part of the development of the self-sheltering uh, US experiments and discourse, implied that the road to a modernized lifestyle uh, in Greece and beyond inevitably led through ad hoc anonymous construction, a non-negotiable um, non negotiable rite of passage that confronted uh, the developing world. So this showed us that uh, we needed to stop reflecting uh, on the Greek city and housing in terms of uh, Greek national specificities. Uh, we came to acknowledge that what happened in Greece was at least uh, to some degree uh, part of the uh, of the post-war U.S. project to construct a world of homeowners, um, as Nancy Koch um, co uh, notes in her um, groundbreaking book, uh, "A World of Homeowners: American Power and the Politics of Housing Aid," along with the financial aid flow flowing around the world uh, where geopolitical concerns demanded, uh, the implementation of technical assistance uh, policies uh, shaped a supranational corpus of expertise through which architects, engineers, and planners came to be regarded as experts, not only in matters regarding their uh, profession, uh, but also in microeconomic and social socio-political ones. Uh, the Greek post-war reconstruction crisis in particular was critical in this respect as Greek technicians emerged as the country's uh, efficient technocrats. Uh, the architect and planner, uh, soon to be global expert um, Kostadinos Doxiadis, uh, presented himself as such as soon as he became the first Undersecretary of State for Reconstruction and subsequently the Director General of Greek Reconstruction, the coordinator of the recovery program under the Marshall Plan and the permanent Undersecretary of State at the Ministry of Reconstruction, oh, of Coordination, sorry. Uh, this position's powers were great and he was central in bringing US money and help in, uh, to Greece. Doxiadis also contributed significantly uh, to the US aided self help uh, theme in rural Greece, and he passed a degree which regulated a series of exceptional and unprecedented facilitations uh, for all urban constructions, thus giving a substantial impetus uh, to anti parochy. Uh, throughout its, its several journal outlets, uh, Greek architects, um, uh, engineers and planners uh, world uh, would fervently uh, support uh, this degree, Doxiadis' degree, as beneficial for the profession. That is, they supported a measure that would promote the anonymous, speculative, low-tech building production of anti-parochy. 
And this was the standard motive for the years that followed. Uh, as we have done a lot of work on the parliamentary ar archives, the daily and specialized um, press, and the newsreels of the era, uh, we, came, um, we came up with a host of articles published by either the Technical Chamber of Greece or, or, or the Greek Architects Association in favor of the construction frenzy secured by Adiparohi. We also look at the classified um, classified ads for um, for Ad Parohi, uh, which uh, appeared as early as 1952 and ever since uh, flooded the Greek daily press, press, as well as the building permits uh, published at the newspaper, uh, two newspapers of the era. So here you can see the the ads. You can see that every day uh, whole. Uh, page was dedicated to, to, to ads uh, for Adi Parohi uh, and, and the building permits that were published uh, in the Greek newspapers of the era. The metadata produced by this research at the ads and the building permits tell us a lot about who uh, were the main players in the Athenian real estate. And they revealed uh, that many architects of the era, uh, and some of them really famous ones, uh, had signed the design of many uh, polykatechias uh, constructed uh, through the system of antiparochy. This was a real revelation uh, for us, and th it was with this in mind that we moved uh, forward to uh, the most fascinating part uh, of our research, uh, the storytelling. We had countless uh, meetings and discussions with uh, some of the protagonists, uh, builders, contractors, notaries, and the architects. And I'll show you a very small uh, portion of uh, the material um, of the material we we collected, we recorded together with uh, Stavros Alifragis, uh, which. This one does not touch upon the involvement of architects uh, in the polycatechias of Antiparchy, but uh, anyway, uh, this excerpt um, was presented, as, you, as Guy already uh, mentioned, uh, in the context of uh, MCMH um, video, so it's already subtitled, uh, so you can read the subtitles. So uh, normally it should, it should play. Uh, So, okay, um, no. Που τώρα τα θεωρούμε εντελώ αυτονόητο. Παραδείγματο χάρη, μια μπανιέρα ή ένα τρόπο να φεύγει το νερό του μπάνιου. Γιατί και τα αξιοπρεπέστερα σπίτια στο Μεσοπόλεμο είχαν μια εξαιρετική σκάφη. Και γενικά, α πούμε, ήταν δύσκολο. Η αποχέτευση δεν δούλευε. Και έπρεπε η μαμά μου να πηγαίνει με τι ντενεκέδε να ρίχνει τα νερά σε, και στην τζανεριά, α πούμε, να την ποτίζει. Και ούτω καθεξή. Δηλαδή, οι ανέσει μπαίνανε και σαν ανετότερο τρόπο ζωή ή γινότερο τρόπο ζωή. Γιατί όλα αυτά πήγαιναν, μπορούμε να πληρωνόμαστε περισσότερο, όλα αυτά. Αλλά και σαν στάτου. Μερικά από αυτά που τώρα τα θεωρούμε Λέω σε αυτό νοήτο, παραδείγματο χάρη μια μπανιέρα ή ένα τρόπο να φεύγει το νερό του μπάνιου. Γιατί και τα αξιοπρεπέστερα σπίτια στο Μεσοπόλεμο είχαν μια εξαιρετική σκάφη. Και γενικά, α πούμε, ήταν δύσκολο. Η αποχέτευση δεν δούλευε και έπρεπε η μαμά μου να πηγαίνει με τι ντενεκέδε να ρίχνει τα νερά σε, και στην τζανεριά, α πούμε, να την ποτίζει. Και ούτω καθεξή. Δηλαδή, οι ανέσει. Μπαίνανε και σαν ανετότερο τρόπο ζωή ή γινότερο τρόπο ζωή. Γιατί όλα αυτά πήγαιναν, μπορούμε να πληρωνόμαστε περισσότερο, όλα αυτά, αλλά και σαν στάτου. Mm -hmm. Και η πολυκατοικία ήταν στάτου στην αρχή. Το θέμα όμω είναι ότι εκεί δυστυχώ το κέρδο έπαιξε πολύ μεγάλη σημασία. Δηλαδή εκεί χάθηκε η εμπιστοσύνη. Νομίζω εκεί άρχισε και εκεί είναι και το μεγάλο πρόβλημα, η οποία δεν έχει αποκατασταθεί. Στην Πατησίων παράδειγμα, τα ποσοστά μου μπορούσαν να φτάνουν και στο 75%. Φτάσαν τα κέρδη μέχρι 50-60% τα κέρδη των κατασκευαστών. Εκμεταλλεύτηκαν 
όλη αυτή την κατάσταση. Έτσι. Ο εργάτη όμω δεν κέρδισε τίποτα από αυτή τη, την υπόθεση. Ο κατασκευαστή με σύνδεδα μια πλάκα έρχεται αντί ο λόγο. Γινόταν. Έχω κάνει οικοδομή με 22 κιλά σύνδεδα το κυβικό. Οι κατασκευαστέ από τον πετό ε, δεν βάζανε παράδειγμα τα σίδερα που έπρεπε. Τι να σα πω παραδείγματα τώρα πάρα πολλά. Πολλοί το κλέβαν το σίδερο. Οι μηχανικοί δεν κάναν τέτοιο. Βρί, βρίσκονται και τέτοια. Οι εργολάβοι. Όλοι έφευγε ο μηχανικό αφού πήγε να παραλάβει τον οπλισμό. Πόσο σίδερο και πώ. Γιατί δεν μετράει πόσο θα βάλει. Είναι και πώ θα το βάλει. Α και τέτοιο. Να ζήσει, τα ξέρει αυτά. Μόλι έφευγε. Βγάλτε, βγάλτε, βγάλτε. Και μετά έβλεπα ναι, όλη την κατασκευή της πολυκατοικίας και όσο βέβαια εγωγευτική ήταν το στήσιμο, η ιστορία του στήσιματος της καλωσιάς. Εξωτερικές καλωσιές και εσωτερικές γινόντουσαν όλες με ξύλα. Yeah. Ε, δεν διαθέταν πολλά Recording λεφτά in progress. για να πάρουν τις καλωσιές να είναι, να είναι να μπορείς να ετοιμάσεις ολόκληρες πλευρές. Όταν το πράγμα προχωρούσε και άρχισε να φτάνει προς το τέλος που έχουν μπαίνουν στα τελειώματα και έβλεπα ας πούμε τις πόρτες που ερχόντουσαν. Τότε ήταν όλα με τα χέρια. Κάρπωμα, έτσι κουβάλιμα, έτσι, ξε, ξεκαλούπα μου που λέγανε, έτσι, ξεκαθάρισμα και όλα, όλα, όλα ήταν με το χέρι. Πάντα με τον ίδιο τρόπο, με το χέρι, με το χέρι, Τι, τίποτα άλλο. Αυτά σε σχέση με την οικοδομική του Μεσοπολέμου, την οποία βίωνα, mm -hmm. μου φαινόταν λίγο υπεραμπλουστευμένο. Πολλοί κάναν την αντιπαροχή και δεν είχαν ιδέα από οικοδομή. Όπως πολλοί δικοί μου ε, που είχα ε, στο, όχι στο συνεργείο μου, ε, διασυνδέσεις που ε, τον υδραυλικό καλή ώρα, που είχαν τον υδραυλικό, που είχαν τον μαραγκό. Πολλοί από αυτούς τα τσεράκια μας δεν είχαν... Ε, να κάνουν αντιπαροχές βρετικανοί, γιατί ήταν η εποχή το οποίο δίχως λεφτά έκανας αντιπαροχή. Μπακάλιδες, μανάβιδες, μαυραγωρίτες. Κάπου κατασκευή δεν καταλάβαινε κανένας. Έγινε απότομα η ανάπτυξη. Άνθρωποι της Τετάρτης Δημοτικού, άμα τους έδινε στα σχέδια, σου σηκώνουνε δέκα ορόφους και δώδεκα. Χωρίς να πατήσει ο μηχανικός εκεί. Εντάξει, υπήρχαν και σοβαροί κατασκευαστέ, δεν λέω. Οι κυφυσίε από τον Ερυθρό Σταυρό στου Αμπελόκηπου είναι χτισμένοι με πολυκατοικίε δεξιά-αριστερά, ομοιόθητε, ομοιόμορφε. Αυτέ γίνανε μια ορισμένη περίοδο. Τι θυμάμαι να περνάω. Αυτό ήταν το πέρασμά μου με το λεωφορείο για να κατέβω πολυτεχνείο, γιατί ε, μέναμε εδώ. Ε, θυμάμαι να περνάω συνέχεια από εκεί και να συνέχεια να κοιτάζω τα για ποια δεξιά αριστερά. Γιατί πολλέ από αυτέ χτίζονταν παράλληλα και πολλέ από αυτέ χτίζονταν από τον ίδιο εργολάβο. Δηλαδή έβλεπε τι ταμπέλε έξω. Οι ταμπέλε είχαν τα ίδια ονόματα. Υπήρχαν εργολάβοι περιοχή. Αυτό είναι σαφέ. Υπάρχουν εργολάβοι που κυρίω χτίζαν στην περιοχή και αυτό στηριζόταν και από τι προσωπικέ σχέσει. Γιατί. Εντάξει, ο ένας με τον άλλο, τα καφενεία, τα αυτά, όλα αυτά τα γνωστά, που είναι ένας εξαιρετικό τρόπος, ε, ε, πώς, πω, πώς το λένε τώρα αυτά που λένε, επικοινωνίας, τα καφενεία και ο καφέ <laughs> και οι γνωριμίες αυτές. Και επίσης, το ότι ήξεραν την αγορά πολύ καλά και τους ανθρώπους και μπορούσαν να κάνουν την πρέπουσα στιγμή, την πρέπουσα πρόταση, σε κάποιον που είχε ένα σπιτουλάκι κάπου και δίσταζε και δεν ξέρω εγώ τι. And I, and I like to also show you a very recent movie uh, by our friends, uh, directors uh, Tassos Lagis and uh, Yanis Gaitanidis, uh, who, based on uh, Theoharopoulos' book, the book I mentioned before, uh, they interviewed uh, mostly uh, contractors and um, and. Um, Uh, housewives, so this is uh, the trailer basically. Ναι, παιδί, να είναι η παροχή. Και κοπεδάκι, θυμάσαι πόσα μέτρα είναι.
και για να εκεί. Ναι. Είναι έτοιμο. Έρχομαι. Uh, so uh, we are just now getting to know the anonymous builders uh, of Athens, right? Uh, but uh, I'd like to present part of our findings, uh, focusing instead on famous Greek architects and their involvement in the design of the Polykatechias uh, of Antiparochy. I will discuss here two case studies, which are of particular importance, I think. Uh, the first one is the involvement of the architects uh, Dimitris and Susanna Donakakis. Uh, Susanna uh, unfortunately uh, passed away uh, on July 2020. Um, you just saw the couple uh, at the video uh, before, um, uh, the video that we produced with uh, Stavros Alifragis, and I already mentioned uh, that their Polykatechia at Benaki Street, uh, Athens, is considered by Frampton, Ken Frampton, and other architectural critics uh, to be a paradigm of, um, of a regionalist and internationalist architecture, uh, drawing uh, from the Greek vernacular anonymous placement making and the specific climate conditions. Because of Frampton's and other critics' uh, interest, uh, the work of Adonakakis' couple rose to international prominence uh, by the 1980s. Um, Albeit they always remained Athens-based, uh, they established a personal contact and a network of interchanging ideas uh, with uh, famous uh, uh, architects like the team X members like uh, the Greek George Kandilis or the Dutch group like um, Aldo Van Eyck, uh, Jab Bakema, uh, Hermann Herzberger and others. Uh, so they were, and they still are, uh, highly appreciated for their work uh, both in Greece and abroad. After long discussions with the architects, we discovered that they designed 23 uh, polykatechias of antiparochy in Athens and quite a few in other Greek cities. Uh, on this map, uh, you can see um, the districts of Athens uh, where these polykatechias are to be uh, found today. They did this starting from uh, 1960, that is well before designing their, their architectural manifesto, uh, the polykatechia at Benaki Street, but even for a whole decade after uh, its completion, uh, completion in 1974. Uh, uh, Therefore, the design of polykatechias of Antiparachy was a regular routine of their practice for more than 25 years uh, during uh, a period that they produced other significant works of theirs. And still, uh, we know so little about uh, their polykatechias design. Um, as the architect told us, the architects told us, designing the plans of polykatechias at the request of 19 different antiparachy contractors in Athens was a condition of survival for their firm, and this was the case for many of their peers uh, at the time. They also regularly uh, redesigned plans of apartments at polykatechias under construction, as the contractors would sell apartments off the plan to finance uh, construction. Uh, buyers commonly uh, changed these plans uh, before or during construction, and they asked uh, an architect to uh, design them. Adonakaki's couple uh, would worked on, um, on the interior design of 18 apartments uh, in Athens. Should we agree with a Dutch proponent of uh, user participation in housing, uh, John Habraken? So, uh, here you can see some of the pol their polkatikias. Uh, the work of uh, Susanna and Dimitris Sadonakakis is, quote, uh, strongly linked to residential architecture, not only because uh, most of their buildings are private houses, but also because their institutional and commercial architecture shows a strong tendency to maintain the human scale of the house or the cluster of houses, end of quote. So it must be of a certain importance that by the time Dimitris and Susanna Donakakis uh, built their famous Polkatikia at Benaki in 1973, that is, they had already worked on 14 Athenian Polkatikias of Antiparochy and their apartments, and that as they confess, confessed, this practice was crucial for them to formulate their basic principles for the Benaki Polkatikia and some other of their famous works. In some of 
these polkatikias, as well as in those that succeeded the Benaki one, uh, they managed to achieve sufficient light and ventilation, abolish corridors and reception halls, uh, common at the Barohi polkatikias, um, inter intersect in between spaces, for instance, connecting the street with the polkatikias uh, entrance, uh, revisit the strict division of the apartment's interior into public and private uh, rooms, etc. So for them, the polkatikias were a perfect exer exercise in a style and uh, composition, composition. They even drew up uh, a Corbusian-inspired uh, saint uh, manifesto. And still, historians have rarely uh, talked about these works. Uh, the second case study is perhaps more astounding. Uh, this is a, a research we've been doing together uh, with Lefteris Theodosis, uh, who has studied extensively uh, the work of Doxiadis. Um, so as you understood already, it's about Doxiadis, this uh, case study. Lefteris, Lefteris found out uh, that Doxiadis was too involved uh, in the antiparochy dealing as land proprietor and as businessman contractor, and even as a con consultant uh, for the wealthier proprietors, including uh, Kosadinos Karamanlis, the country's prime minister for the period 1955-1963. In fact, uh, Doxiadis established um, um, in 1962 a constructing joint stock company uh, named Zigos. Uh, up until 1972, Zigos constructed 10 polykatechias, uh, drawing on the Antiparochy system, the location and spread of which you can see on this map. <coughs> now, uh, some of you perhaps already know the work of Doxiadis and its importance, but let me just refer to some of the highlights. First of all, as I mentioned before, Doxiadis held key positions uh, within the Greek state apparatus uh, with enormous powers since uh, he was 32 years old. After he left his public office in 1951, he established his international engineering and consulting company, Doxiadis Associates, of which impressive record in housing and, ma and master planning included extensive project, uh, projects in different latitudes, such as the National Housing Program of Iraq, the Eastwick Redevelopment Plan in Philadelphia, and the creation of the new capital of Pakistan, Islamabad, to name just a few. In Greece, he worked um, since 1960 on ambitious, ambitious plans aimed to set a comprehens comprehensive long-term uh, development framework of, for, the, for the country's uh, capital, Athens. One of the highlights in Greece is without doubt the commission of to the Xiaadis Associates of the National Development Plan and the Regional Plan for Athens, commissioned by the military dictatorship, albeit both plans never got to be materiali materialized. So, why would uh, Doxiadis bother to construct uh, a handful of apartment buildings uh, in, in Athens? Why would he bother to keep abreast of the market conditions, uh, reading and keeping in his archive uh, newspaper articles of the, apartment, uh, mar of the apartment's market? Uh, he even had one of his employees uh, to spy a successful and parachy contractor of the era and, re and then report about it uh, almost in the manner of uh, corporate uh, espionage. Uh, in fact, the report produced to be found today at uh, the Xiadis archives uh, is a rare testimony uh, of how the whole business of Adi Parahi worked uh, back in the 1960s. Uh, the company was a small uh, family business of five to six employees which uh, sold its polkatikias apartments with small advancements and many installments and thus managed to have at the time of the espionage uh, 22 polykatikias under construction and more than 500 uh, apartments on sale. <coughs> The most successful characterization of Kakava, of, sorry, I shouldn't mention the name, but anyway, uh, of case business, uh, Doxiadis employee reported, would probably be a supermarket of apartments. Its polkatikias are, are rather, so this is the report Doxiadis employee produced um, 
uh, during his uh, espionage. Um, uh, its politiques are rather cheap constructions with a vulgar taste. The business is addressed to a low-level clientele, and indeed to these people for whom obtaining a privately owned ho home is still the dream of their lives. Uh, the business's offices are constantly crowded, and in the three times I went there, so he went there three times, uh, he was serious in his job. Uh, with a total stay of more than an hour, the business must have must had reached an agreement with at least two people. Uh, the spectacle was impressive. On a Saturday afternoon, I experienced the atmosphere of a flea market. Uh, so why uh, would a so successful and recognized in Greece and abroad and Licensed, licensed architect and uh, planner want to check out a simple uh, small contractor's uh, business as usual. Uh, the answer is pr pretty simple. Uh, the Oxiadis organization was expected to profit a lot from Ant Parahi's real estate speculation. In numerous reports, uh, the Oxiadis expressed this belief uh, that this office could be financially supported by Zygos' activities uh, in the Athenian real estate, right? This whole organization, the, his enormous office, he was hoping that he could support, uh, he could significantly uh, support his office through the Adbarahi dealing. In fact, the establishment of a company to deal with Adbarahi by the Oxiades testifies for Antparachy's success, really, right? The Oxiades clearly realized that if it was, was to gain something out of its involvement in the Athenian real estate, it had to engage with free market modus operandi. He even recommended that Zigos should employ a typical antiparachy contractor, someone who was, quote, a working man of the market, even if he's lacking any education, end of quote, and who, quote, had nothing to do with the job of the engineer, end of quote. Uh, Doxiadis was convinced that, quote, all the contractors in Athens involved in Polykatikias mainly profit from the surplus of land they exploit, end of quote. Ironically enough, um, a couple of years earlier at the third uh, architectural conference um, held under the theme uh, the contribution of the architect, uh, an urban planner, to the development of the country, Doxiadis had made a similar observation exclaiming, quote, I beg all the colleagues who built Polykatikias to tell me, if they were to make accurate cal calculations, whether they made more money from their profession or from land speculation." End of quote. Interestingly, apart from the financial aspirations, Luxiadis hoped that Krizikos was to provide the DA works, workforce training on the job experience, as well as opportunities to experiment with production and materials. Eventually, in 1974, Doxiadis condemned the company as failed. Now, the discussion about the reasons of uh, Doxiadis' eventual failure to advance a competitive uh, business model in the Greek real estate it's not the purpose of this uh, talk today, but m let me just observe that this failure reflects to a great extent uh, the impetuous uh, dynamics of uh, Antiparochy. Architecture was undeniably a secondary part of that system, at as it has rightly been observed by Frampton, Theoharopoulou, and other scholars. As much as the ideals of architectural modernism could not apply to informal models of housing uh, provision and the anonymous production of space, however, uh, partly because of architecture's delusion of grandeur and control, architects, engineers, and planners did professionally, professionally engage with Antiparochy, and they won a lot from this. Both uh, Adonakaki's couple and, and Doxiadis' involvement uh, testify uh, for the above. As I conclude, uh, I'd like to make an observation regarding the architectural archive. Uh, 
Uh, the architectural archive is a peculiar entity uh, constructed and reconstructed over and over. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it is constructed in the architectural office, where the architects uh, choose to preserve their important works rather than the embarrassing, embarrassing and unsettling ones. Uh, thus, some of the plans and documents on Adonakaki's uh, uh, Polykatikias of Antiparochy have regretfully uh, been lost uh, forever. Uh, the same is the case with Zigos. As any researcher of the archive um, knows, Doxiadis' archive is one of the biggest, most complete, and ob almost obsessively uh, organized architectural archives. Partly because of uh, because the fact that because of the fact that Doxiadis himself uh, used to keep and organize everything, bills, internal and external uh, correspondence, even short notes to his employees and partners, what he called signs. Uh, sketches, draft plans, newspaper clips, audio and video recordings, photographs, conference, conference records. Every text Doxiadis has ever, ever written in draft and printed version, you name it, it's in there. And still, in such an archive, all the plan of Zygosis Polykatikias are lost. As, as the archivist told us, Older archivists, uh, archivists uh, thought this material was an insignificant or perhaps irrelevant one. We eventually managed to secure uh, the plans by the current residents of uh, Zygosis Polkatikias, uh, which led us to another uh, fascinating path of um, historical pro co-production, uh, but that's another story. Uh, it is nevertheless frustrating that we met the same pattern uh, in every architectural ar archive we searched. Uh, at the National Archives of Modern Greek Architecture, only architects' plans and drawings are, are maintained, which signifies to us that only the practice of design is recognized as architecture. But what about the negotiations with the clients, uh, all calculations of costs, even the payments and the drafting of the Antiparochy uh, contracts? Uh, weren't these parts of the reality of the profession uh, in Greece? Uh, it's like we want to forget this part of the story, and thus we are thrown in a sort of uh, project of uh, collect collective erasure of this unsettling uh, past of the profession. But in Greece and maybe beyond, uh, my point is uh, this past was real and it is a fact that architects really interacted with what is perhaps more settling to simply label as the anonymous production of the everyday. Not only did they earn their living uh, from their involvement, but also in certain cases, members of a technocratic elite holding key positions during the period, in effect promoted Antiparochy's thriving, like Doxiadis, right? Perhaps then the project of removing anonymity from what seems like urban informality and the commonplace uh, is a way to unsettle, uh, establish uh, historiograph historiographical receptions, not only of architecture or the different modes of housing production and our city's development, but also wide-ranging issues such as the growth of the economy or uh, the construction of social identities. So, uh, thank you very much for... I really want to thank Constantina for uh, this uh, presentation because it's a, a really, I think, also successful way to open the discussion uh, in our symposium that we will continue tomorrow. I'm extremely impressed and fascinated by the project and uh, also by the elements uh, of continuities and similarities that in some way we can find with the, the Italian case. So, but uh, I hope we will have uh, the opportunity to discuss also about the sources that you can use uh, uh, to, to conduct this type of research. But uh, I would like uh, now to open the discussion and to ask uh, if uh, uh, there are questions. Uh, okay, perfect. So uh, if you agree, you can come here since we are... Okay. Hi. Uh, I know this isn't e exactly the point of the presentation, but I wanted to ask you about the urban regulations in place during the time of, uh, of these buildings? Were, was everything permitted on the lot or did they have to follow some rules? 
So, um, so um, as, as I, as I uh, like very uh, briefly mentioned, um, um, you know, um, the degree that is passed, in fact, inaugurated a whole um, exceptional, let's say, uh, uh, um, period of exceptional measures uh, that uh, would uh, actually. Uh, if not promote, allow the growth of Ant Parochi. Uh, basically, the state was uh, not only um, not only uh, lacking um, in, in terms of not providing uh, housing uh, for for uh, the people in need, but also uh, really uh, boosting the whole um, uh, growth of the system. Um, so this was uh, for a long period, uh, the period we actually uh, study that starts from the exact, uh, exactly after uh, World War II and ends uh, at the end of the military uh, junta in Greece uh, in 1974 and for the uh, few years uh, after this. Um, the basic regulation that contractors should um, follow was the general building regulation. Uh, there was one in 1955, another one was was going to be drafted in 1965, and another one in 1973. So in these periods, we, we actually have two uh, big uh, building regulations. And this actually also were uh, were using some tools that, that they they imported, let's say, from uh, the European models, but then they were kind of uh, misappropriated, and um, this was uh, this was not only uh, a lot um, a mistake, let's say, but it was something that it was guided by uh, the state, um, so that contractors would find ways to uh, secure profit out from um, following uh, these regulations. Um, and tomorrow in my speech, uh, I'm going to focus on, um, on the space, uh, floor space index and uh, how this uh, imported by uh, the British model was actually uh, misappropriated and was used as a speculative me measure and uh, actually in a, in a way as a way of planning Athens because uh, you could uh, authorities uh, either uh, the state or uh, local authorities would um, decide uh, the maximum height of uh, certain areas uh, in Athens so in that way they were deciding uh, the growth of the city and uh, at the same time the, the price of the land um, because if you can imagine the height of the building uh, defines how much you can exploit. So the, the price of the land was rising. Um, so yes, in that way we can um, imagine that there was a, uh, constant allowances by the state um, and a certain clientelism. clientelism, clientelism. Uh, so yes, um, there were regulations, but at the same time, these regulations um, secretly acted as um, measures uh, to boost uh, the whole system. Hartmut. Um, I wonder uh, how was the relation with the financial capital and uh, the speculation and uh, also the purchase power of uh, the, the... The what, sorry? The, the what uh, power? The purchase power, the people who bought the apartments. Mm -hmm. um, um, was the larger capital involved or was it all everything, a small scale capital? Only? Because the land uh, could, had to be bought uh, uh, to develop. Uh, and uh, are there international uh, capitals involved or is it only a Greek affair. Yes, uh, so for the period we are studying, uh, it was only small scale capital. That's, that's, that's the whole thing actually. Um, uh, because um, Athens was parceled in uh, really small plots and this goes back to uh, the interwar period. And um, uh, 
uh, Eleftherios Venizelos uh, politics uh, um, for uh, small proprietors of land. Um, after the war, um, small proprietors could exploit the, the land, giving it, it was actually more profitable to ask from a contractor to build a polykatechia in place of their old house than really sell their land. They, they, no, actually, in most of the cases, no money was intervened in the process. Uh, you would exchange, uh, it was an economy of exchange, right? So you would give the plot, basically uh, mostly with an old house and a relic obsolete house, as the, the video before explained, and, um, and you would get back modern apartments, uh, which one of each would be your home, your renewed home, and the others, one or two, you could exploit, you could give to the other members of the family or exploit. So uh, at some point, and because of, um, I believe, because of the whole um, US politics uh, in Greece and the, 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 whole, the world of homeowners they created, as Nancy Kwok has explained so, so well, um, home uh, became a, a quality that was much more important than money. And for a long period in Greece, money uh, was a very insecure, uh, a very insecure um, um, com commodity. Exactly because um, uh, because um, the, the the price of the drachma, the Greek um, um, coin, was uh, always. Uh, up and down, and uh, and uh, the um, and the commerce was not doing well, and and you, anyway, you couldn't trust money, so you couldn't keep money for. So uh, home became a great commodity, and everyone uh, preferred to um, really uh, go through the system of antiparahim. So uh, the whole system uh, created people that were uh, making profit, but the, it was people. Um, that they didn't have capital. They didn't have large capitals. Most of the times they didn't have capital at all. And they would begin as contractors to make this type of uh, um, agreements. And um, there was not... Sorry? No, 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 no. I, yes, you're right. Uh, actually, uh, at late 60s, the, uh, it began, it be, uh, mortgage, mortgage lending began in Greece for housing. Before that, there was no uh, bank uh, support uh, or credit support for, um, for housing or for uh, basically for uh, industry and uh, enterprise but in Greece. But you needed money to buy a, a flat. Yes, for to purchase a house, uh, people uh, at, the, at the beginning it was the middle, not the middle class, but people who could purchase the house. And um, around the city of, this is a very interesting question. So, uh, at the beginning, it was considered to be a, a commodity for the higher uh, classes. So, mm -hmm. people who would at the first decade, the first post-war decade, who would uh, purchase or basically rent a house, an apartment, would be the people who had the economic uh, possibility. But this is a very <laughs> um, nice thing that happened in Greece. Around the center of Athens, there were created areas that were uh, outside the city's plan, and these were called aftereta, mm -hmm. and people would build, uh, you know, a small, uh, basically, um, uh, like, um, uh, uh, huts, you know, around the city of Athens. And then um, as a measure of, again, uh, allowing the whole system from the state, the state would uh, recognize these expansions, these cities, and it would uh, uh, take back in the city of uh, Athens, um, the, it would um, include into the city of Athens these areas' expansion. So, Suddenly, these land proprietors, these small land proprietors that they would uh, have uh, gained their land titles through semi-squatter semi uh, semi practices, they would suddenly become proprietors. And then they would build polykatechias uh, in this uh, land. So it was a whole system that actually built the middle class in, uh, in Greece, in a way, you know, because you would uh, the the first thing you would want is to um, to have a small uh, land to 
uh, exploiting this um, system through this, this is only one part of the of the people who uh, needed housing it's not only the squatters uh, around the city the refugees and people from uh, minor asia also uh, mm -hmm. who had been settling there on land but which they did not own and mm -hmm. and then they were legalized and then they became owners and, yeah exactly and, yes and could use it but uh, the rest of the city the rest of the city was uh, grew in this manner. I told you before, people who had the economic uh, possibility to rent or buy an apartment would do it uh, th through the apartments that were created through the system of antiparochy. And up to s at, at a certain point, uh, the whole system did not even bother uh, for the uh, for the. Um, uh, for the demand in the market. Uh, and this led us to the housing crisis in late uh, 70s, where there was enormous supply of houses in the market and no one um, demanding for these houses or uh, even being able to purchase this housing. Because the whole, um, the whole system was so profitable uh, that it started working without, it started over uh, passing the demand, uh, as you can imagine. So. Um, it's a whole, um, anyway, it's a whole uh, a complex uh, system, um, which is very difficult, really, to, 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 and I understand that there are many questions on uh, the antiparachy <laughs> system, but it's very difficult, right, like, to, to explain in, in just a few minutes, but um, it's a complex from below economy, which is based on small scale investments, or or no investments at all at the beginning. And um, at the beginning, um, trying to approach higher uh, income strata, but then in incorporating lower income strata. I think we have a few more questions uh, in the room. <laughs> Just to add on the previous question, that after the 60s, the middle class was growing. So we had uh, doctors, mercants, a new urban population that had cash in a lot of cases to buy the flat. So just to, uh, from my own experience, a further uh, addition. I would like uh, to ask you um, uh, what would be another possible scenario if uh, there was no antiparochy or polygadigia in, in Greece? Because the previous uh, model was the arbitrary expansion. So uh, the, the afterida. Uh, arbitrary expansion was uh, antiparochy has succeeded this model and legitimized, as you said, this kind of development. So what would be another uh, way on? If we did, because we know that there are particularities, fragmented land, uh, um, absence of land registry, land uh, conflicts, so all this uh, uh, condition, how could evolve differently? Uh, so, uh, this was a constant uh, question uh, I received uh, when I produced uh, the book uh, on uh, the self-sheltering um, organized by the U.S., uh, the, the U.S. experiment in rural housing, uh, which was um, promoting private-led construction, uh, uh, investing very much on small-scale uh, capital and uh, savings and private savings and family, um, um, family uh, collaboration and all this. Uh, I received this question a lot. Uh, I mean, what would be the, the alternative? Um, and this was uh, actually uh, what Konstantinos Karamanlis, the prime minister, said when he was, um, uh, he was uh, accused that he had uh, provoked all this uh, development. And he said, what would you uh, want me to do? Uh, Greece was a very uh, poor country and I couldn't do uh, anything else. I mean, wh where should I 
where should I uh, house all these people in my head? Something like that, he said. So um, that's, uh, uh, I think, a reasonable uh, question. But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not trying, uh, through my research and the research of the team, uh, we are not trying to answer to these kind of questions. Uh, I mean, we know that there were possible and um, alternates that they were um, um, proposed uh, during this period. That there was the leftists, uh, the, the communists proposed uh, industrial uh, development of the country, of course, based on another, uh, not not on capitalist uh, development, but you know, another uh, uh, based on the Soviet models. Uh, uh, there were um, esteemed economists of the era that they, they also um, promoted uh, industrial development. Also, uh, some members of the U.S. agencies and the U.S. Uh, help also uh, were um, for uh, industrial development. And Italy as well was a rural, uh, very uh, a rural country. Uh, um, and I'm not sure I'm, I can't really compare uh, the needs for housing, but I, I, I believe that it really had a great needs for housing after the war. But because of uh, U.S. involvement, it, it soon became uh, an industrial country, very very fast, right? So, uh, being very com uh, in very common path with Greece, Italy and Greece had very common paths before the, the war. Uh, after the war, they they changed a lot their um, post-war uh, development paths. Uh, so um, what I can say is that there were different alternatives. I'm not sure if I, I will support the one on the other or the other, but what I wanted to do, and I still want to do through the research we've been doing, is to um, to try to, 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 to unsettle basically the historiographical uh, receptions and to reveal uh, unknown aspects of uh, this development, this growth, such as the US involvement and uh, the involvement of famous Greek architects in the whole process, which are uh, things that people don't know about the growth of Athens. Uh, basically, we say that it's a purely uh, bottom-up phenomenon, a phenomenon from below uh, involving only small-scale uh, uh, construction companies and appropriators and housewives. And uh, But I wanted to to see what's behind this. I, I'm not really um, the, the right person really to answer if this was the best thing. Or If you ask me, I like the Greek politikia and uh, the growth uh, of the Greek politikia, but um, this is not, uh, I'm not thinking in these terms in, in any way. So this is not the question I'm, uh, I'm trying to ask, uh, to answer through this uh, research. I, uh, yes. Yes, okay. Okay, so, um, so uh, thank you for a really a beautiful, um, so beautiful, I can see, I'm I here. I can see you. Where I'm you? over here. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you for a beautiful presentation and fascinating ah, research. Okay. Um, <laughs> so as you were talking. So uh, you're Yael, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing. So, <laughs> um, so as you were talking, uh, everything you talked about seemed uh, extremely familiar, of course, with, with different tones. Even, even these pictures look very, very similar um, to what has been uh, happening in uh, mostly urban areas um, in Israel um, starting the 30s but in, in certain waves, uh, and which is um, also happening right, right now um, through this, uh, what, we call, what we used to call speculation housing. Uh, right now, the terminology is by a certain um, national master plan, which is based on people's speculation on their housing. And so I'm, what I was you know, really interested in is um, um, in your, uh, what you're in a sense doing is a history of a certain policy, and, and I'm thinking, what is, um, uh, what are the the elements of this that are incorporated into um, Athenian or Greek uh, developmental models right now? So, what were the, 
how are these um, principles embedded in, in today's development or are they you know, a, a matter of, of the past? Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, what you were saying about the archives, about housing disappearing from the archives, I, I found it fascinating and resonating as well. Just a comment. Uh, so, um, thank you, Angel. I think we've talked uh, in the past about uh, the commonalities with uh, Israel, and I find them fascinating too. And I, I, I really hope that this would be the next step of our research. We tried to do a, a start and a beginning of, with uh, our ABBE journal uh, special issue calling for uh, other um, types of speculative housing um, initiatives around the world, basically. Uh, focusing on the global south, but hopefully uh, we can expand this as well. Uh, and the, the one of the architects that talked before the, in the video you saw before, uh, he told us that he did actually a very similar thing to Antiparachy in Israel very recently. Uh, so we, we've heard about the existence of this, and we we are really uh, excited with the possibility of interchanging uh, ideas about the and, uh, and data about the, the commonalities. Uh, one of uh, the main uh, uh, aims of this research is really to try to uh, disturb the idea that this was a uniquely Greek phenomenon and try to find the commonalities that explain uh, basically the reason why uh, for its existence. Um, so uh, the, the question about what's happening today with this uh, urban fabric, which is, as you saw, immense and uh, expanding all over uh, Attica region, uh, is, uh, is not uh, the focus of our study, but there are studies today. And basically they have start, started from uh, the period of the great uh, crisis in Greece, the economic crisis. Uh, for instance, there, were, um, th there is a, a Greek scholar, Fereniki Vatavali, who is studying the energy deprivation in the Greek polykatechia and how uh, the uh, co-housing with um, other proprietors uh, has created lots of problems because people would not want to, to, to buy the petroleum needed for the whole heating of the building and they wouldn't pay the money, they wouldn't give the money where other proprietors of another apartment we would want. So she has... Uh, studied this a lot and this was very interesting. And uh, there is another uh, scholar, uh, Dimitris Balabanidis, who studied the Airbnb uh, exploitation uh, in the Greek apartments. And basically what's happening is that there are big uh, companies that they are buying, uh, apart like they're buying the top roofs of many polykatechias in a whole area in Athens, uh, like next to the Acropolis, Plaka, Kukaki and other areas. And they exploit, the, like, I don't know how many apartments, basically, but like large amounts of uh, apartments. Um, so I think um, the understanding of how the whole uh, thing was produced could also help these studies and um, the discussion about what's happening today with the, the Athenian urban fabric. Uh, but not really the, the, the focus of our study, but we are trying to, to discuss with these uh, scholars. Uh. Uh, I would like to, to uh, read a question from the chat by Ludovica, uh, who asks or who says, uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. I have a question. I was wondering, uh, okay, now it's, it moved, sorry. <laughs> um, now it disappeared. So, I was wondering, was the typology of the polykatikia, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, codified where there are shared spaces? Because in the scheme that you showed, the one in which there is a dis distinction of private and public space, the cuisine and bathroom are outside of both categories, as they were shared among the apartments. Okay, uh, it's a good question. Uh, uh, mostly because I didn't explain uh, when I said public and uh, private rooms, I didn't mean uh, public uh, for public use uh, for uh, you know search spaces in the like like the Das Comuna uh, buildings in the uh, Soviet Union, but actually it was uh, the the, uh, the interior of the apartment of the private owned apartment was divided to places that were destined to social uh, interactions of the family with the. Uh, 
uh, people visiting, uh, whereas uh, the rooms, the private rooms, were uh, were um, divided, uh, were placed distinctly in the back of uh, the apartment. And usually, what was the common practice of uh, uh, typical middle class apartment in Athens was that these uh, public uh, rooms were destined only for uh, uh, these uh, very important, uh, very important celebrations, and so uh, basically the housewife <laughs> would, uh, you know, uh, tied um, tied up this room and uh, wouldn't let her children play uh, in this room, and it was the good room, like the 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 dining room or the living room of the house. And this was what Antonakaki's couple uh, observed and they wanted to um, to redesign in a way, trying to make uh, rooms that they really uh, are used uh, during the whole uh, year and they are really for the family. Um, so no, yes, there were not shared uh, spaces uh, apart from the shared, uh, shared uh, stair staircase, the stair uh, elevate, stair elevator, uh, the garden. Uh, these were uh, shared uh, spaces, but within the apartment, or there were no, there were not shared kitchens or stuff like that. Thank you very much. And now we still have uh, Vlatko. Uh, yes. Please pose your question. Yes, uh, thank you, Constantina. First of all, thank you for your um, uh, presentation. You Thank you for supplying us or providing a different aspect of uh, the career of Doxiadis. That was very interesting. Um, my question has been answered through some of your answers already. Um, that the polycatechias are uh, not limited only to Athens, but you can find them uh, throughout the Hellenic Republic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I'm interested in is, uh, have, has the Polykatikia evolved in some way, or it is a one-off exercise in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of design, you mean? In terms of design uh, and in terms of uh, supplying enough uh, housing space in Greece, because, for example, I can understand the terrace only as an aspect of providing shadow. Otherwise, it's so narrow that it has becoming a uh, kind of a storage space in the city, which is not really uh, interesting and uh, and inspiring. Uh, so I, I wondered. Has the design of the polycatechia evolved during the time? Uh, it has certainly evolved, and that's a very good question because, um, first of all, um, the polycatechia, um, we can say that the polycatechia apartment followed the common taste, you know, and the, uh, and the uh, conventional lifestyles of uh, uh, the. the the, the family, uh, but at the same time, uh, as life uh, changed uh, over the decades, uh, the apartment followed, and um, it also, uh, and this is an interesting question, because it shows how architects were leading the way uh, to, the involve, to the evolving of, of the, uh, the polycatechia and the apartment design. As uh, famous Greek architects of the era would uh, design polycatechias that were not produced to, through the system of antiparochy for the wealthiest uh, appropriators. And uh, these polycatechias would become, would become the trend. And uh, all the contractors then would imitate what the famous architects were doing. And I think this was a basic mechanism uh, a mechanism of uh, polycatechias involvement. And the building regulations were f following or also shaping uh, this involvement, involving uh, in the way. So um, I can't really bring an example on this because we haven't really focused on the uh, apartment design. Uh, there is a, a scholar I know, Richard Wolters. Uh, he's German, and he's uh, st he has studied together with other scholars, uh, um, like. 
um, Theo Haropoulou, the uh, interior of the apartment, the interior of the polykatechia. But uh, the answer is positive. Yes, it has involved uh, a lot. Yes. Quick. Thank you. I am sorry because we have to yes. close, but uh, there were uh, still some uh, uh, comments and remarks. Uh, but really. Oh, just a basic uh, question. Uh, thank you, Constantina. Uh, it's uh, on the typology and the construction systems. Mm -hmm. The question is the research on your uh, your research uh, in the archives. You could find drawings like sections and plans to try to understand the process building uh, of uh, of what we see. Uh, yes, as, as as I said, it was really difficult to find the plans in the archives of the architects, um, and uh, we have found the plans at the contractor uh, contractor offices or at the current residence uh, uh, with the help of the current residents of the apartments of Zico, of Zigos or uh, designed by Zigos or uh, the Adonakakis couple. Uh, uh, regarding the construction of the polycatechia, it's a basic uh, uh, concrete slab system uh, where you have the domino uh, principle, you have uh, beams and uh, slabs. And uh, the funny thing is that this is a modern inspired uh, system using um, uh, concrete, uh, reinforced concrete, but at the same time it was produced through very low uh, tech techniques. As you saw at the video, the builders were uh, describing the way this was uh, produced and it was like, um, all everything uh, by hand. They said, you know, they, they, they were they were uh, going up the stairs with a, a bucket of cement that was produced uh, on the floor uh, without, you know, the machine uh, producing the beton arme. It was producing on the ground. It was produced on the ground. So you can imagine very low techniques. And you can see in this picture the wood uh, scaffolding that uh, uh, that uh, it was mentioned also in the video. Uh, so. The construction of the Polkadikia is yet another chapter that deserves to be studied, um, but hasn't been studied in detail yet. <laughs> yes. I'm sure that tomorrow we will have the opportunity to continue mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. uh, conversation also with Constantina. And I would like uh, to uh, close uh, with the remark by Sila Karatas, mm -hmm. who was online. And oh, following, hi, also <laughs> <laughs> following also Yael's uh, note on the similarity to Israel, she is saying that the type of private urban development through contractor built apartment block was exactly the same model for housing in post war Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, which is the still, Yap uh, SAT system. Yes, uh, which is uh, still uh, the main housing development scheme uh, in uh, all Turkish cities. Yes, I know. We have been You're talking about honest. this with Sila, and we are looking forward also to compare, compare experiences. The cases. Yes. So I really want to thank again Constantina yes, I thank you very for much. the thank generosity you very much. also thank in answering you. the yes. questions. And we can uh, uh, move now downstairs for uh, uh, a small uh, welcome drink at the cafeteria. Thank you.